color model or an HSL, depending on how I want to run it. Red, green, blues. So if you know your RGB number, that the best, like I can say red of a 13, green of a 12, and a blue of a you know 66. Well, now there's more blue than there is red and green, and now I've instantly pinpointed exactly the different color I want. It shows you what the new color will look like versus what the current color will look like, which is kind of nice. That way you can kind of compare the, the two. We'll go ahead and cancel that, but just to show you, that's how you can change the text as well color instead of just the page or the background or in this case the highlighting color that you're utilizing. Now when you do this you might say well is that all the options that I have? Well not entirely. These show the, a lot of options but in the fonts I can also come over here and notice I can get this font dialog box. This is going to give me all the bells and whistles by simply selecting down here and bada bing bada boom here we go here's the font. Here's all my font selections, the font styles, the size, the font color, underline style, all the effects that you can think of, and even character spacing. Now this is important, especially when you think that right now I went to a 10 point Arial. So if I want and I go to a character spacing, right now I can scale it at 100%. But I, right now, let's say I want to expand this a little bit. If I click on the expanded, notice how all of a sudden it was expanded. Now there's an additional one point between each of the characters. If I go back to normal, it'll show you what it looks like normal. So you get the preview here. The one thing about the font dialog box, just so you know, you lose the instant preview. However, they do give you a preview down here where you can select something. You can do a condensed or you can do a normal or you can do an expanded. By the way, that's only one point. If I go up, you can notice each time I go up a little bit, it's going to expand what, the, what, what that looks like. So if I go up to 2, now it looks like a 2 point. Or I can just again come back to normal. You can scale it. You can say I want it at 150% or I want it at 80%. You can bring it back in. I can condense it. So this will font, and then this is what it tells you, by the way, because it's a true type font, what you see on the screen is what you're going to get on the printer. So we can go ahead and uh, go back to 100% and leave it like that. Position normal. Do you want it raised? Do you want it lowered? Now notice, this is different than superscript and subscript. The size of the font remains the same. You are just lowering or raising it um, you know, up above the actual position, the, the center line. So if we go to normal. Now font, and if you come over here and you add a superscript, notice it changes it to a smaller font and then puts it above. Or if you take that and put on a super or subscript, it drops it down and changes it to a smaller. So that's the difference between using the character spacing raising and using the subscript superscript. Remember that if you do plan on taking the exam and they ask you to raise the script or use superscript, or if they say change the character spacing on something, you would want to use the character spacing for that. Subscript or superscript you can use uh, as standard, which you also have a, a little button there on. In fact, we'll move over here and show it to you. It's right here on the actual uh, grouping. So you can do that. Now, here is where we mentioned earlier how you can do hidden text. If you want to hide that text, it will not appear. People will not be able to see it. Um, it will be there only when you highlight it and show the hidden text. Would you be able to see it, like in the formatting? We can change ca caps. We can emboss. We can engrave. So if I want to add embossing to it, notice how it changes the aerial to look a little bit like that. Or I can engrave it where it looks like it's kind of carved in. So we'll, we'll go ahead and take that off. Or we can do is like a shadow, which will be nice. So we'll go ahead and do a shadow, and we'll underline it, and we'll underline the words only. Now notice as soon as I change the underline style, now I get my underline color. Before, when you have no underlining, it's grayed out, so it's not going to show you any of that. You can also click on the default. Now what this allows you to do, when you click on default, it says, all right, now you are going to change the default font for this particular document and this is going to be for the normal template, which, you know, anytime you open up just a blank sheet on your Office 2007, your Word 2007, it uses the normal template. You're going to say, well, the default font is Arial, Bold, and Shadow. So be careful when you make these changes. We'll talk a little bit more about customizing Word in one of the last of our Nugget videos because that's actually something they test you on. So we'll go ahead and cancel that and say no, but we will say OK. We'll do Arial Shadow. We click OK, and now with the font, it has that certain Arial look with the shadow. So 
pretty neat. This is how you can use the formatting tools that we have to take your text and really bring it to life and really show things the way, you know, you're just like, wow, that's really cool. Now, we had seen, of course, word art and some other things that we're able to do, which can take it to the next level. But if you just want some basics, that's what this text formatting is all about. I do want to encourage you, though, if you have your Office 2007 version of Word open, play around. Try using all the different little keys in here and see how it looks. What looks good for me might not look so good for you, and vice versa. So make sure that it looks nice and professional, or if you're trying to be goofy, hey, be goofy and enjoy utilizing the formatting tools that you have in place. With our text just being out there on the screen, it doesn't look all that great, right? Well, now we know how we can go in and change those fonts, make them look something a little bit better, whether it's the size of the font or whether it's the type of the font. We also saw the basics formatting, you know, bold, italics, and underlining. We saw how we can do that, and including and changing and using highlighters if we need to. We also checked out the Format Painter. Format Painter is that quick and easy way to take formatting that you've done on one section of the text, and then and apply it to other areas in your text. You can do something similar with quick styles, but sometimes you just might not have that particular style in place, and so Format Painter will solve that you know little issue real quick. And then character spacing. We took a quick look at character spacing, which allows you to change whether you want to elongate the spacing between the characters, raise them up above the middle or lower them below, and how that is different than superscript and subscript, which also changes the size of the font, not only the spacing. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Microsoft Word 2007 formatting paragraphs. Well, we've taken a look at font and text and made it pretty and, you know, changed colors. But now, what about that entire body of text that's located in what is known as a paragraph? Can we do formatting on that? Well, absolutely. Because just as much as you can highlight a point by using text formatting, you can also take an entire paragraph and say, hey, look at me, I'm very important. And to do that, we need to use paragraph formatting. Formatting paragraphs is actually not very hard. There are a lot of things, though, that you can do that, if you're not paying attention, can really mess up the alignment of what your text looks like. So we're going to take a look at indents, how those can help us out, the alignment, whether it's left, right, or justified, paragraph spacing. Hey, do you want some space before and after your paragraph? Or what about even the body text itself of your paragraph? Do you want spacing between that? We can do it. And then my favorite, borders and shading, one great way to really set a paragraph apart. Before we get too far into this nugget, I do want to make sure that I let you know exactly what we're talking about when we say the word paragraph. Now, understand, paragraphs are, you know, we, we all have probably experienced, and if you took English class and you probably thought about it, uh, a paragraph to you is probably what I used to think a paragraph was, and that is, you know, a bunch of uh, sentences that are put together and to have one concise thought. That, I mean, that's what your English teacher taught you. But in the world of word processing, and in this case, in Word 2007, a paragraph is any text followed by a hard carriage return or an enter. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's first off take a look up here. Remember, we've looked in our formatting areas. We've already talked about fonts. Here is the paragraph formatting, which is going to be, again, on your home tab for the ribbon, office ribbon, and the groupings usually right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. This is the show hide. It shows your paragraph marks and other formatting symbols. We saw this briefly in one of our first videos. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Now, when you look at this, Anytime you see one of these little backwards P symbols here, that is a paragraph. Now, wait a minute. I thought a paragraph was a, a series of sentences that had a concise thought to it or, you know, one main point. Look at this. In the world of my uh, Word 2007, Jeremy Chara is considered a paragraph. His address is considered a paragraph. The hometown AZ is considered a paragraph. And then there's these weird little tabs. That's what the little arrows mean, tabs. And then, oh, look, here's the end of the paragraph. And look at this. How weird is this? There's a paragraph with nothing in it. Well, yeah, that's right, because Word, anytime you hit that hard enter, it says, oh, you want to start a new paragraph. So when we start talking about paragraph formatting, it's vital that you separate what you might have learned in English and grammar to what a word processor looks like.
looks at it like. Okay, so that's a little bit of the theory behind it. But the neat thing is, is that you can change the look of your paragraphs by changing its alignment, as we're going to see right here. We can change the indents that we have here. In a later Nugget video, we'll talk about how you can change the tabs and columns and things like that. We can also define the width of the paragraphs just by simply defining the area that is the white space. In other words, all the things we have here, we've got margins, we've got indents, all of that helps us define our paragraph. So whether you want to put a pair, uh, as we're going to show you, a border around it and add shading, all these things are going to be done right here in this paragraph area. And why do we want to do that? That might be a good question to ask. I mean, hey, Chris, why would I even want to worry about the paragraph? Well, like I said earlier, the way that you formulate and format your paragraphs can draw attention or decrease attention from it. So depending on what you're trying to do, you might want to format your paragraphs a little bit uh, different. So, although the left and right margins are set for an entire document, anything that happens between those margins can be changed by simply varying the position of the text between the margins and that means we've got to use the paragraph formatting. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. We'll turn it on and off a little bit throughout this video as we, we take a look at that. So probably the first thing that we want to take a look at is the indents. Now indents are controlled by what you see up here on our horizontal ruler and you'll notice that there's a couple of them. These little uh, almost like a diamond arrows here. The top one is going to be your first line indent. If I just roll over it long enough it's going to tell me my first line indent. Down below it you're going to see is what is known as the hanging indent. The first line indent means that any time that I hit a carriage return or an enter it will then start my text wherever the first line indent is placed. And then any subsequent lines any uh, that come in, come after that are going to be at this marker. And then finally you've got right down here at the bottom your left indent. This indents the text to this marker um, basically if you just want to set the, the standard indent. If you notice if I click my mouse and grab it moves the entire indent system and structure. In order to move the individuals you have to click on the individual ones and then you're able to actually move those particular ones. Over here by the way you also have your right indent which wraps the text when it reaches this marker. So this is where you set your text wrapping when you're typing. So let's take a look at just our first uh, you know, paragraph right here. So we have as a valued customer of Acme Musical Instruments, let's say we want to change the way things look. Now what I can do is I can triple click and get the entire paragraph and then I'm going to affect what happens to this particular text with my indents. So the first thing I can do is I can click on the bottom one here and move the entire indent over. Now watch what happens. Boom! It moved the entire left indent. Now that's kind of interesting. And then I can come over here to the right and I can grab the right indent and move it in. And look at that, it pushes it together. So now text is going to wrap between my left and my right indent. Now where this becomes even more interesting is where we use the hanging and first line indent. Now the first line indent means that the first line of text is going to indent to wherever you place this. So what I might want to do is say, all right, on the first line, I'm going to indent it that much. Now see how it only affected the first line of my text. It didn't affect the second and third lines or any of the subsequent lines. Those are the hanging indents. Now, of course, I can move my hanging indent and say, well, now the uh, consequently, the second and third lines, let's say we want them to indent even more. So I'm going to move it over here check it out. So now the first line will indent to here and then all the subsequent lines will then indent afterwards to here. So we can see that again it wraps it here at the right but over here on the left we put a first line indent and then the hanging indent so all of the subsequent indents are going to happen down here whereas the first line will happen. Now watch what happens. Let's say I want to show how this works when I hit enter. So right now I've got the paragraph I've got my indent sent. Oh, and before I go there, though, check this out. Notice how all I was doing, it only affects a paragraph. So only if you select anywhere in one of these paragraphs, 
you'll notice that it shows you what the settings are for each individual paragraph. In this case, 